Today what I want to go through with you is the sort of things that uh, you can do with your children at home to try and maybe give them an advantage as they come through our pathway. But everything we do today is, is the sorts of things that are going to help them from an individual point of view. And it doesn't matter what age of athlete, I guess our shopping list of things we look for in, in an athlete, and that's a, a Vic country level right through to an Australian tier level, uh, there's five things we really look for. The first thing is their one-on-one -on -one ability. So by that we mean, can they create a split? Can they get into the paint off the dribble? Um, can they create their own shot? And can they uh, get by a defender? So that's the first priority from an offensive point of view. The second part is a 1v1 defender. So can they stay in front of their position? So it's a game of opposites, we try and teach it two ways. Can they stay in front of their position or the position below if they're not a point guard? The third thing is their ability to shoot the ball. And uh, through the athletes here in our, in our high performance path, the one with number one is a future Australian player in the making. Uh, they're getting more shots up per week than, than uh, any other regular athlete around because we put a huge emphasis on the ability to shoot the ball. So a thousand makes per week is George's goal at age 15 still, at age 15. Um, some of our centre of excellence athletes that have gone on, Jack White who's about to go and play for Duke, his goal per week was 3,000 makes per week. So there's a lot of reps to be able to get to it. What I want to be able to show you today is the style of shots, a uh, style of shooting technique that we try and promote through our high performance path. The next part is basketball IQ. And really in what we're trying to do with the under 12s in this tournament is get them to understand as simple as if it's one on one, it's on them to be able to create the opportunity. If they see two, they must pass the ball. That's a, the level of basketball IQ we've got right now. As athletes get older, it's understanding the system of play more. It's understanding what they need to do when, relevant to shot clock, relevant to time and score. But right now, they're the sort of elements we want in play. And the last part is coachability and competitiveness. Are they a player that when it gets tough, they're pulling an injury, sitting down, not wanting to really get into the battle? Are they coachable in the sense that can we help them become better and help them make change in their behaviour. Uh, they're the things, those five things at any level of our, our pathway we want to try and uh, see if we can help them out with. So for you guys, if you guys can come out, uh, sorry, get on the baseline with a ball each and spread right along. The first thing we want to kind of demonstrate on is body movement uh, activities that can help injury prevention long term but also build a basketball base of functional strength. So a lot of times in practices around Country Vic, athletes may get together for one hour a week. So fundamental body movement and development gets kind of left behind. So what we've tried to do is put some things together that you can incorporate in a warm up, but even more importantly, that the kids can get done at home, 15 minutes it'll take them per uh, night three times a week that'll give them a great base moving forward. The first one we're going to get everyone to do and I've got three athletes from Echuca that I haven't worked with before so they're going to try and learn on the run and I've got three that are involved in our high performance path so you may be able to see variance uh, in ability on the things we do but pick that up and use that for your own coaching technique as well. The first one we're going to do is a ball squat so George is going to demonstrate She's my guinea pig today. Starting off, yep, facing the crowd because that's our audience, drama class. We want to be able to see it. Forward pivots and just ball squatting. So keeping the back straight, chest out. Everyone get involved now. You're coming up to the red line and back. So trying to build a good uh, base of strength through, through our tails. The ability to get past someone is the strength in our glutes. The ability to shoot the ball is the power we generate through the strength in our glutes. So the areas that we'll see that are maybe not so good is people kind of wobbling around. We want it to be a nice, strong positioning, like George is pretty good at this, and being able to maintain a squat fully through that time. We don't want feet outwards or inwards. We want them kind of square on. 
So now it's knee over toes as the squat occurs and the back is straight. On the next one on the way back, I just want you to ball squat by touching the ball on the ground as you go on it. So let's go back towards the baseline now. That's it, Sammy. So chest out, trying to keep their back straight. So it's their glutes that are doing the work. You can see some wet noodles, some people flopping around a bit. Should be a nice controlled movement every time. We would do sets of three of those. Up to the red line's fine. Uh, sometimes we might, if it's a pre-season phase, we might extend that up to the halfway line so it's a longer rep. But three times of that, start of practice, should get them in good shape. The next one now is going to be, they're going to raise their leg up to a right angle and wrap the basketball twice, step down and forward, and then swap legs. So, Georgia, you're the guinea pig, off you go. So now, freeze there. What school do you go to? Clarendon. Clarendon, is it? What's a right angle at that school? Is it acute or is it at a 90 degree? All right, so... That's first teaching point, trying to get the athlete to just keep that leg straight. The next part is again, making sure it's knee over toes, not that they're wobbling around like me, that it's a stable uh, stance between the, the ankle and the knee. See that right angle. There, that's much better. And the next one. Off you go guys, everyone follow suit. Good. So now we're trying to incorporate the basketball into the movement as far as Getting some skill work and trying hands. Really important, knees over toes always on these movements, but the foot is straight. Next now we're going to build into a lunge, and lunging for us is pretty critical in, when you think about most movements. When we're trying to get by someone, we're extending out, we're being as explosive as we can, we're, we're lunging forward on the play, defensive ability as well. So now, what, uh, G, you're going to go into your lunge forward, ball wrap in between your legs, step together and go forward again. That's it. So working a lunge, making sure the knee isn't on the ground. Foot needs to be forward, so toes facing forward, knee over toes. Let's go, guys. Not to pick on Jimmy, but if you watch his knees, they bend in towards. Can everyone see that? That's what you don't want. You want to try and aid, <laughs> good, right, falls over right on cue. We want to try and make sure that the knee is over the toes. And that's a, that's a cue for your child. Uh, the more it goes in, and girls are um, genetically susceptible to this, but the more the knee goes in, the more pressure it is on that joint, the more likely for an ACL at some point in time. So again, the earlier you can intervene on that, the better off it's going to be long term. Toes forward, G. The last one we're going to show is what we call an arabis. So it's going to be a lunge. The foot needs to stay straight and Georgia's then going to start with the ball above her head. She's then going to laterally lunge out and try and maintain a horizontal position for three seconds. Do you know horizontal? Just checking, that. that's good. Trying to be as still as she can be. Now, hold there. Luke, you do the same thing. Let's see where you're at these days. So lunge out, and start it from the start. So do your lunge, yep, ball above head, and then lean forward. All right, that's not too bad, but see how the knees kind of got that wobble in play? That's what we're trying to aid over time to develop so that it's a stable joint. So again, when the athlete lands, there's less chance of them hurting their knee. When they land on their ankle, it's stable, less chance of a roll. Let's go up to the, to the red line. So lunge out, lean forward, nice and horizontal, three seconds. So again, intervention at an early age, an under 12 age. It's only body movement, it's not weights. We're not trying to add weight, add bulk. It's just about building a core stability. From a coaching point of view, not that you're wanting to coach a kid probably, but the critical part is getting them to understand both sides of the body matter in the sport. So if they're really stable on one leg, but then the next leg they're a wet noodle, getting them to feel it and talk about what are they feeling at that moment in time, not telling them what they're feeling, but asking them to identify it is pretty critical in these movements. 
And again, as long as their toes are facing forward, it's knee over toes, they're in pretty good shape. So I'm going to get these guys to do this stuff with two balls. Uh, but obviously, depending what level your child's at, it can start off with one ball. One thing we try and do in everything through our pathway is we very rarely do things on zero or without a contest. So we want it to be a one-on-one -on -one battle. Um, we want them to be doing things that are very much game specific. So the first one I'll get Luke and, and Georgia to demonstrate. Georgia's the lead, so she's going to start with her ball. You've got your ball as well. You're going to be the defender. So you get to face her. It's a mirror drill. So you as a parent get to learn your development skills of ball handling as well, but if you're not comfortable dribbling, you can just move and get them to mirror it. Luke must slide and dribble, so he's the defender. George is just dribbling at a normal pace, changing direction. All right, so for today, we'll just go right to left, keep it simple. All right, off we go. So we've got to mirror it, got to slide, so they're working some defensive technique, but also ball in hand. All right, you can change direction with the ball as often as you want. You can do a double crossover. Defender has to stay with it. Let's have a look. Let's go. Got to mirror the move. Got to mirror the move. <laughs> Don't quit, Luke. You're on audience. You're on display, brother. The reason that we want to do things that they have to be focusing on is to just train eyes up. So again, anytime an athlete, and we've got some really good skill sets here this week, um, anytime an athlete can keep their eyes up with ball in hand, that's something that impresses me. Like that's something I want to see out of a ball carrier. So straight away, they've got to mimic your movement. Well, now we're training that at a high level um, right off the bat. My development philosophy has never been about starting at a, a low level and building it up. I've always gone the other way because for me, well, you can't drown on a basketball court, you'll figure it out. Like over time, they'll figure it out, they'll get to the point that we want it. So again, that sort of drill we would do straight off the bat. The next stuff we're going to do now is building on our fundamental uh, movement skills and, and the uh, bases that we've built up. So the George is going to have two balls. Luke is going to face her and push and just rest on her shoulders. So now George has got to dribble against some resistance. So again, working on our core strength. Yeah, and back. Just go a couple times for me. So now we're making it a bit harder, two balls. Now they're feeling a bit of a resistance, so once it's off, they're going to become more athletic. But again, working on those fundamental core movements. Forces them to have their eyes up. The next level on that that we want to do now is, who's dribbling, you are? So George is now going to get behind and get a good hold on the singlet. We don't want to tear it, and obviously you can pick and choose which top your kid gets to wear when you do this, because we don't want to ruin it. But now we're going to just kind of move Luke around to try and make him a wet noodle again. So sometimes we'll let him go, sometimes we'll hold him up, sometimes we'll move him over, we'll move him back. So now he's feeling a different sort of resistance. Off you go, over and back guys. Don't ruin anyone's top, no any complaints. Good, shift him around a bit. Luke Rosendale from Echuca everyone. That's it, move them around. You get to get yours back. And back the other way, swap rolls. We'll go three times through. It's good. It is good for them to feel different resistance because again, what we try and do is make the game as difficult as possible in a practice environment. So when they do get on the court, it's one-on-one, -on -one, now life becomes a bit easier. This is more advanced stuff, but already what I've seen this week in uh, both the boys and girls playing is one skill set's getting taught really well in the respective regions. Um, the second part though is a lot of the kids are really ready to be challenged straight off the bat. 
So going with that can't drown mentality, one of the things we do the first six weeks is a high skill uh, period for our athletes and we try and just make it as hard as possible so they can build it up. So there's two ways. First thing, you can use tennis balls, whatever you want. I like these because they're hard to catch. Um, and the way we make it harder is instead of catching underhand, we try and catch overhand. So they're kind of difficult to do. You're all going to start with a blue ball in your right hand. First one's going to be, as you throw it up, left to right, right to left crossover, and you can catch underhanded first. All right, first person to get five done. So again, trying to make the ball be just the ball, they're worrying about something else. So the vision's somewhere else. Five, G gets it. Now, there's two elements. You figure out the smarter kids as well. G's going a real short throw because she knows she can win it quicker that way. Depending on her skill set, Luke's throwing it to hit the roof because he knows he's got time to dribble it. But they're figuring out where they're, what's going to help them get the win. Change hands, go the other way. This time though, you must catch overhanded. As, a, as the uh, athlete gets better, we go back to zero if they drop it, throw a different target. I might come in and mess with them, put my hand in there, whatever it may be, but trying to get their skill set to a point where they're not worrying about the ball anymore. The basketball is irrelevant. That's part of their skill set. Now they're worrying about something else. That's what we need for the game. So double team comes, they're not worrying about the ball, they're just seeing what's happening, they get out of it, now they move it on. Uh, now we're gonna challenge you a bit more. This time, uh, throw it in the air between the legs, right to left, left to right, cross over in front, catch it with your left hand. All right, freeze there for me. So one other thing that you can help your child with straight away is uh, I'm sure at home they don't stop talking when you want them to. On the basketball court, every athlete for us, we're always talking about communication. Be vocal, get it done. Um, and what often, when we get to a national camp, some of the things that separate are who are the vocal people because it sells their basketball IQ. You straight away know what they're trying to get across uh, to their group or whatnot. So we are always about they need to count their score as they go. All right, it needs to be loud, it needs to be over the top of it. Next one now, change hands. So we're back on the right hand. So we're gonna start left hand, it's gonna be between the legs, left to right, right to left behind the back. You can catch underhand this time. Off you go. One. Good, Luke. Two. One and a half. One. Good, that'll do. Um, we can add any combination of dribble moves. Again, what it's about is them forgetting about looking at the ball. The ball becomes part of them. They start feeling where that is. The next part's just adding something difficult. Um, with any dribble drill we do, we try and make it competitive. So not just dribbling on the spot, not number of dribbles. It's always something like that or to time, how many you can get in 30 seconds. Uh, we want competitors. So again, like at an entry level, sometimes you need to start just with the basics, but as your child gets better and better, challenge them, find ways to give them something else to get better and better at. So it might be how many can you get done in 10 seconds, 30, whatever it might be. I wanna move on to shooting, because we did say that was the most important thing. Um, one thing, so this is, I'm going into my fourth year of running Country Vic stuff. I did six years in Tassie and before that my life was in Adelaide. The one thing that uh, we try and emphasize more than anything at any level is how important the three point shot is. Um, when we get to international play, teams only lose if they can't hit the three and I think the Olympics kind of showed that. Like our one game for the Boomers that you know, we were pretty confident on in the semi-final, we just didn't shoot well from the three and that became the point of difference. Um, so that's why you're seeing at an under 12 level, threes count. Our system and style of play revolves around being able to do that in a minute. So you guys set up around the, the arc, you guys have done this stuff. Key parts to the follow through is where their vision is. So the first error athletes make is they don't spend enough time on their target. Whether that's coming off an on ball, driving in the paint for a layup, or catching and shooting. 
A lot of athletes will spend time on the ball, have a quick look and shoot it. It's like I use the analogy for kids as they get start getting their license. Your depth perception on when to flick the indicator on, you just kind of know how far away that is. Right? Your mind, you, you just subconsciously know that. Shooting's the same. I can stand here, look at the back of the rim. I know how far I've got to, how much effort I've got to put onto that shot. So that's the number one thing we want them doing, even now while they're in close, is eyes to the back of the rim. Lock on their target, spend time on the target. The second thing is where their index finger goes is where the ball will go. So it's just like throwing a tennis ball. If I point over there, that's where the ball's going. So on the finish of their shot, they must point through to the rim and hold that follow through till it's in the net. They're going to finish on the shot. So their shot should be a straight arm, lock and snap on their wrist and point through to the rim. Uh, just change your spots as you go. We'll go first to 10. Off you go. Straight arm, no bend in the elbow. So the coaching points on this are keep the ball out of the palm so they want it in their fingertips and they should be just trying to raise up and go with it. Because we're talking about really young athletes at the minute and one of the things we had that was great in Adelaide and uh, South Australia is known for its shooting ability is we're able to drop rings down to six foot. So if you've got rings like that, that's the best way to really try and break down the actual action because the first thing you'll see is kids come in and really heave it but well, we want to try and get the technique right. For these guys, we would try and emphasize that it would be uh, a swish on every make. And of course, they're great athletes. They don't need to be told things twice. They're counting their score out loud. Good job, Sammy. If you can't shoot, you can't play at a high level. All right, like it, it, unfortunately you can't. Defense does matter. We're not going to tell the kids that that doesn't matter, but if you can't shoot, you can't play. Right. So that's what we call the shot component. The next part back, and we teach the shot from end to start. And the reason being is often kids will forget about their follow through, so we spend time on the shot. The next part, what we call is the load position. And uh, when I first got here, we, you know, we used to make a real big emphasis about elbow to eye line. Because if you look at the best shooters in the world, that's where their shot will get to. Their elbow will be specifically at their eye line. Um, what I found is a lot of coaches was coaching that to the nth degree, and we had a lot of kids with balls behind their head. So what I've done now is change that to, they've just got to be able to see underneath the basketball. So G, come out here. So if Georgia gets into a load position, that's effectively a load. She can see underneath the basketball, so as she rises to her shot, she's just going up into the shooting action. Um, what we don't want is her to be looking over the basketball and then getting into the shot. The reason being, time is of the essence at an international level, and everything that I do is about producing Australian athletes. So for Georgia to be able to get her shot off, at a world championship, she has 0.5 seconds to get it off. That's how quick it is. So the lower it is, the harder that shot is to get off. So we're talking about just trying to get it to our load quick and shoot it. So you guys go back now, you can take a little step back. We want to start on the load position and then we're going to just go up and shoot it. The critical part is hold your follow through till it's in the net. Off you go. Ah, it just makes. Good. So, again, just seeing underneath the ball, load it to shoot it. There are so many things we can put onto the shot. Back spin, fingers spread, etc, etc. But for us, the critical parts are those three. The, the actual shot, the load point, how high they're lifting it, and then that set position. Five, Luke gets it, we're only going to five on it. All right, so that's our load point. Come back, G. Now we want to work on our set position. So the set position is what we communicate to our athletes on where they want to throw the ball. So perfect set positions at chest height for G, but now we say she's got to be able to look over the basketball. So set, load is underneath the basketball, shot's on the shot. All right, so 
come back now, three points guys, and just go mid-range. So we are, gee, that's good. Outside the red arc. So now what we want them to do, to try and start building up some athleticism into the shot, we always go on two bounces. So on the set, the second bounce will be to the low point and they're in their one action. Trying to make it look like a wave. So the ball's just going up in one rhythm, must hold their follow through till it's in the net. Off you go. Perfect. Must be coached well, G. The reason for the bounce as well is to get them to feel what it's like in rhythm. Again, the longer they can hold the follow through, the longer, the better chance it's got of going straight. Five, good goal, Luke. All right. So that's how we build the shot up. Um, again, those cues are set position, seeing over the top of the ball, low position, seeing underneath it. And the critical part on the shot is holding the follow through till it's at the rim, index finger at it, and eyes to the back of the rim. So even from that set point, the vision should be on the target, not on where the ball is, not on anything else. It should be sighting the rim. The next part to the actual technique of the shot is building footwork into it. Um, the hardest thing when we think about that 0.5 second shot clock, the hardest thing is getting athletes' feet to be quick enough to get that shot off. So we have rules in Country Vic that anything above the flat of the three-point line must be caught in a stride stop. And our, our catch cry is if the ball is in the air, your feet must be in the air. You must go meet it and then get the shot off. Anything on the flat of the three-point line, we make a jump stop. And that's purely just so we're not turning it over by stepping out of court. So the amount of times you see kids catch it, it's turnover. So we just sit down, ball in the air, feet in the air, but load it and shoot it. So shoot it from wherever you want, but I want you to meet the pass, set, load, shot, go. Not too bad. Give her another one. Wait for her to be ready. One more. Come on, three in a row, G. What, what are you doing? When she's playing for the Opals, you can remember her as a 15-year-old kid. Um, that's pretty good. Now, the only criticism I would have is it's slow, all right? But the, the technique is spot on. So catching it in the air, loading it, shooting it, it's a beautiful shot, all right? So now to try and speed her up, Sammy's going to come at her, all right? Now, again, this, you might have kids you want to throw at home, just get the energy out, let them run at their brother or sister all day, that's okay. But now what we want Sammy to do is he's going to fire it out. G's got to get her shot off before Sammy can block it. You ready? Good. It's a much quicker shot. So now we've taken the skill, added a contest, and now we're getting a game-like situation. The last part I want to work on with footwork here is being able to play off in action. And now we're trying to get a few things in play. Um, the first rule that I would always have is that we never pick up the ball to pass it. It's too slow a movement, so anytime you're doing something passing with your child, try and get them to do it off the bounce. Uh, two hands to the ball, it's just time wasted. Uh, the, the, the shot clock matters to us, more time spent. So if Georgia's gonna make the pass, she'd be on her outside hand and she'll make that push pass. Jimmy, right? Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy is shooting. So now as G makes that pass, what we're going to work on is meeting the ball, but catching on the inside foot, load it and shoot it. Can you do that for me? Might be. Start in the corner. So we're going to get some time. So you've got one dribble to get it to him. You're just going to cut to a space inside foot catch. Then the same's happening on the other side. Me to catch, uh, for... Good. Not bad. Keep rolling through. Jimmy, you're up the top now. Working as a drill, brother. Good, good footwork. Rolling through, here's a size six for her. Good. So again, trying to get some, uh, some action now that they're going to use in a game. So you've all seen we're playing out of a handoff. Well now, they've got to be able to come off that handoff. If defense goes underneath, we want that to be a license to shoot. 
So trying to then get them to understand the why of why we want inside foot catch on that. Uh, G, come back in here, I'll get you to demo quickly an outside foot catch. So if there's ever a moment in time where we cut towards the ball and get pushed out to the wing, so come, come inside to start. So we've got the old V lead, which actually doesn't exist anymore in the game, coming in and going back out, it's time off the clock. Doesn't happen, it's a stiff arm lead leading out to an inside foot catch. Or if you walk me up the line, it's a stiff arm lead to catch on the outside foot. Good. On that outside foot catch, the last thing I want to kind of teach, let's just flip you to the audience. There we go. Pretend we're still going that way though. Um, if it was the outside foot catch, what we want to try and get the athletes to be able to do is what we call play off a throwdown. Uh, when we go play internationally, and this is like from academy level, the kids will be taught this, we want to throw the ball down from the outside hand, therefore it's not deemed as a travel. Anytime we would grab the ball, move it to the other side of our body and dribble it down, that's a travel in international play. So while it isn't in Australia, we need to try and set our athletes up for the greatest amount of success. And I'll go through some numbers in my three years here of how many kids have gone on to Australian level. For your children, it's four or five years away where that potential could happen. So getting them to understand this may seem like it's not that important, but it really is in the big picture. So what George is going to do is get the ball and she's going to throw it down with her fingertips facing down on the ground. And she's really throwing it out and going to go get it. So I'll give you the pass. Come give me a lead and show them at pace from inside. And what I want you to do is throw it down and then get into a pull-up jumper wherever you feel comfortable. Throws it down, good stride stop, gets into a load and shot. If I slowed that down, and I only know this because I've been coaching Gia for a while now, she would be looking down at the ground and then up on the eyes. So this time you're going to get your eyes on your target earlier. I keep telling people, someone's going to pay me a million dollars one day just to tell them that bit. Um, but that's perfect. So again, it's about throwing it down, trying to make them be an athlete, get into a shot nice and quick, load it and shoot it. We good? All right. You guys can have a seat. Gee, you're up. Luke, you rebound. The last thing I want to kind of go through is free throw shooting. And uh, in our system, our style of play, I talked to our state coaches about we want to try and get 33 point attempts up a game. So that's, that's our goal. Matched with that though should be how many free throws we're putting up. So if we've got that balance, the free point game, we try and educate the athletes about the free points of free throws, points in transition, second chance points. We need to try and get 30 free shots a game. So now that equation works out to a win. It's a guaranteed recipe for success. At our recent world championship, uh, I think we shot the ball 68% from the foul line. Only got seventh in the world. Two years ago, uh, we shot the ball 83% 83, 83 from the foul line. Second in the world, got a silver medal. It was a big point of difference in being able to get a result and not get a result. Likewise from the three-point line. Uh, this time I think we shot 42%, no sorry, 38% from the three-point line, which was actually one of the better clips in the world. But when we won a silver medal, we were number one, and we shot 42% from the three. So those two shots really mattered to what we could, could ultimately do. We select athletes purely on their ability to hit those two things, because again, that's the stuff that's ultimately going to help us at the offensive end. So again, the things I want to just go over, and when you're helping your, your child with how they should shoot at the foul line, to me it doesn't really matter what they do with the bounce. However, spending a long time on that is just more time the mental demons can come in. So for me, the preference has been, and if an athlete misses, I'll just tell them, sight the target and shoot it. So they'll just get it, look at the rim, and shoot it. There's not a lot of time to think about it. Go through your normal routine. All right. The number one thing that needs to happen is from the time you get the ball, 
So pretend you've come off, yep, ref gives it to you. The target should be sighted. And again, if you can help your child to understand, all right, you've got the ball now, if you're dribbling it, no worries. But if I'm holding it, I've just got to sight the back of the rim. The second part is holding that follow through. So let's go through it. Step off the line. It's pretty good. Falling short, so what do you need to adjust? Yeah, let's go. So, it, it kind of probably sounds really simple, but the amount of times we get athletes, and this is at an Australian tier, they come up and we'll go like this. They'll just straight into it without even, I'm a good shooter, but without even looking at the rim, they'll just launch it and hope it goes in. There needs to be a process on that. The next part is if you two can be out here facing each other, is a lot of people will talk to me about the mechanics of the shot, elbow really tucked underneath. And my time in Tassie, I had a full-time sports scientist with me. And uh, what she taught me is, you're doing everything wrong. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, no worries, what do you mean? Well, with the shot, most people can't actually tuck their elbow in. I could never do it. it used to drive me insane trying to get that in and shoot it. But at the age of athletes that we're dealing with here, we can develop some good habits. The quickest way to get them to develop that habit, just give me a bit more space, you stay where you are, Luke. If Georgia dribbles it, picks the ball up and shoots it, just have a, uh, actually you go that way, just so you can face your ends, yeah. Just catch the ball that way and then. So have a look at Georgia's arm as she dribbles it, picks it up and shoots it. All right, now, uh, how am I doing this? Luke, you come out here, sorry. Luke, you do the same, I'll rebound it. So dribble it, pick it up, and shoot it. So dribble it, pick it up, just shoot it out, I'll get it for you. All right, pretty good. Now just shoot it off a catch. Just shoot it off a catch. All right. So the point being, an athlete can only shoot the ball straight if their arm is underneath it. So even though I can't get my elbow in, if I dribble it and shoot it, my elbow is naturally underneath the ball. So a good repetition for muscle memory right off day dot is just to be dribbling it and passing it to each other. So go do that now for me. I'm just trying to keep that thing straight. Elbows underneath the ball. It's just constant muscle memory. I guess any sort of advantage you can give your child by giving them some of these things earlier, um, it's going to help, help the, the outcome long term. From a country perspective, we've spent some time uh, in the last two years of introducing all this stuff at this age group. And uh, the thing that I'm noticing now as I go out and about, watch tournament play, or we get the kids in at academy level, is just how much more advanced athletes are, which ultimately is a good outcome for us. Uh, while we want to win gold medals and national championships and that, which is nice, to me that's going to be a byproduct of how many Oz reps we have and how many athletes are making those teams. Uh, Jazz Shelley just won a gold medal at a world championship, uh, the, you know, one of three. Uh, gold medals that Australia has uh, and she's a country kid just coming out of Maui um, did the work had a, a good base early on and then really escalated off so it's a beautiful part of the game is that we can go around the world and play it um, I've only seen the world because of the sport uh, wouldn't have been off my own back so again we can really provide some great opportunity for the kids I hope the stuff that we've shown you today will give you a chance to be involved with your child from a basketball point of view, but also help them out and get them to have a bit of an understanding of what it's going to take to really push through to the pointy end.